in the conventional history of Prevaza, written in 1990 by Spiros Lokatas, it was stated that there were only two Jews living in Prevaza in 1870. In 1881, the Metropolitan Bishop of Art and Prevaza, Xenopolis, wrote that in 1881, there were 150 Jews living in Arta, but doesn't mention any Jews in Prevaza. So, as I mentioned, in 1883, you already have Jews establishing a Jewish community in Prevaza. Now, when the Bishop of Prevaza died, in 1885, Jews were present at the funeral. According to the administrators, administrators of the border and local administrators, South, Southern Epirus began to import from Europe industrial products that supplanted the local industry and developed new avenues of commerce. Most of the Jews of Prevaza were engaged in commerce involving the importation of textiles, haberdashery, and other products on all levels. Before the war, in other words, World War I, almost all the families, uh, almost all the heads, almost all were heads of their own businesses, but few were wealthy. Most struggled to survive, only doing so by strict control of their expenditures. The Jewish shops were in the marketplace on adjacent streets. The shops extended from uh, Karyotaki up to the Galano supermarket, except for Bakola's shop, where, uh, which was toward the cathedral, were in the continuum. Then the Bakola had a, came from Yanina, and his son Leon was born in 1917. Okay, so. In 1908, the Alliance of Slaves Universal started functioning in 1908 uh, due to the uh, great interest expressed by the headmaster of the school in Thessaloniki, who mediated in the central offices of Paris. The initiative was also supported by local Jewish community uh, factors. The school had two classrooms on the ground floor, and the headmaster's office was on the first floor. In 1911, the new French instructor, Salomon Danon, came from Paris. At the time, the community was composed of 85 families, about 160 members. The school was mixed, and with the passing of time, it had 106 pupils. The community supported the school financially, donating 1,500 francs, in other words, half the total budget. This instructor was paid by the Alliance. During the war, the First Balkan War, in 1912, Professor Danone developed a great charity project for the community and was devoted. He assisted many Jews who were homeless and unemployed. In spite of the great poverty, the school continued functioning normally. The school had four instructors who taught Hebrew, French, and homemaking. Uh, so in 1943, the Germans took over that occupation zone. The community had 250 members. In 1944, at the same time, the Jews of Yanin and Arta were arrested, the Jews of Prevaza were arrested, and they were sent and deported to Auschwitz. Only 15 survived. In other words, 94% of the community perished. When, when the Germans arrested the Jews, they were taken to the Haidari transit camp near Athens, and from there they were sent to Auschwitz. Only uh, 15 Jews uh, returned from Auschwitz, and in 1959, there was only one Jew left. Today, there are no Jews there. In the year 1929-30, in the first three high classes of the high school, there were 14 Jewish students. There were six in the first class, four in the second class, and four in the third class. Uh, the absence of Jewish students in the last three classes of the high school appears to be due to the fact that the Jews first started to send their children to the high school in 1927-1928. Directly before the war, this number would more than double. The Jewish cemetery was outside the school, right of the middle door of the moat. Um, after the war, a large portion of it was encroached upon by neighbors and others. Mr. Constantini, who visited the cemetery on May 20, 1946, wrote, the retaining walls that had been constructed to prevent vandalism have been destroyed on two sides. The one closest to the road is almost completely destroyed and, if not repaired, will be gone in a few years. The writings are hardly, leg high, hardly legible on many of the tombstones, and if not salvaged now, they will disappear forever. No attempt was made to save the cemetery, and it was finally sold by Keese, that's the Board of Jewish Communities, to the municipality for a token price 
In turn, the municipality surrendered it to ICA, who constructed a housing building on housing all the agencies of Prevost. The only thing I'll say is there's a woman that I wrote an article about named Rachel Dalvin, who was a prominent translator of Greek into English. She, she introduced Kavafi to the world. And she was born in Prevost at the age of, from a family from Yanina. At the age of five, they migrated to America. Her name was Rachel Dalvin. You, you saw her book cover in uh, a previous segment. And she's an important literary figure uh, of Romanio de Churi. She lived in America all her life. She, she, she passed away. She lived on Fifth Avenue in New York. She was married for a short time. She had no children. She also taught um, uh, drama at Sarah Lawrence College. But she is a Romanio de Churi. There were very few like her. She had a doctorate early in the 30s. She did a lot of research on Romanio de Churi, in, in particular, uh, the Jews of Yanina.